So, uh, we have four questions to get through. Um, I believe Inga has uh, question number one. So difficult first one. I know you took a big risk over that one. Wait, I have to Okay, I, I do sense a little bit of sarcasm. Go on. Okay, so basically, um, it starts with four. Yeah. Yeah. And then you have to like figure out what the there's three. So we know it's, how do I know it's plus three and not times something? But how do you know it's not times something? Because it says arithmetic, which means it must be a plus one. Okay, don't always assume. Like for instance, if this was a one to three, it could be plus two, but it could also be times three. So don't always assume it's a plus straight away. So you guys that didn't do this one, let's write this out. Yeah, you've already done this. I know, but we're now going to all the four, so you can write down the solutions to these ones. Um, and you don't just write out the question, you just put a question because you've got all the questions there. All right, so we know it's plus three because it's arithmetic. Um, uh, which method did you use? Did you just count up or did you use formula? Use the formula. Okay, go for it. So, what did? Okay, so then. Okay, so again, I think you're skipping. Okay, so let's say just for sake of getting to practice, because we know it's arithmetic and plus three, we know it's going to be u n equals three x. Okay, that means U1 should be three times one, which gives you three, but I want four. So we add one. Okay, so we've got this over here. Are you trying to find what Yeah. What? Verify that with another method. The other method, which feel free to write or not write, it's up to you. We've been four, seven, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we add three on every time, it becomes ten, thirteen. We verify. Up to you which method you choose. Uh, who was? So the first term is, and how'd you find it? And how'd you go backwards? So we add 2.5 if we're going in the opposite direction. So that would be 13.5, 16.5, 16.5, 16.5, 16.5. Okay, and then go the other way. So so U1, we've already got as 16, and U10, we've got as negative 16. Oh. We have a 6. Yes. 
right, I believe Anderson. So, to tell me what to write, how would we be writing this solution? I did the. You did what? The, the model. So, tell me what to write out. One, two, three, four, five, six, six, seven, seven. Um, below the one, it's eight. Below the one, so. The first term is eight. Second is twenty-four. And there's a, a gap between gap is sixteen. So the gap is sixteen. So you're saying plus sixteen. Right? Okay. So the third would be a three. So it is forty. Fifty-six. What? Seventy-two. Okay. Anyone got any problems with that? No. What's its common ratio? Sixteen. I think just the fifth one. Why? Just be lucky, but like if it was 24, I mean, if it was, what is the common ratio? Why are you asking that? Oh, oh there you go. Oh, it's a common ratio the same as a common difference? It's a geometric. It's a geometric, isn't it? It's got to be multiple. So, a common ratio is when you multiply, not add. So, that's the mistake that we made. So geometric is actually times R. So your process of adding, you have done it using a, an arithmetic method. So actually all of that is wrong because you created an arithmetic sequence. Well, actually it's a geometric. So we actually need to figure out what do we multiply by? Three. So the common ratio is actually three. Say times three. So wait, at first, we're adding three because there was no. So he worked out what we add on, and it was add on sixteen. So do you remember I said there are? I was speaking just a minute ago. I said with some sequences. If you're given the first and second term, is it a times three or is it a plus 16? How would we know? Well, the reason we know is because in the question we are told it is a geometric sequence. And if it's geometric, that means it's a multiply and not an add. Yeah, but how do you get three? Well, eight times what makes 24? Uh, so the common ratio, we do 24 divided by 8, because that's a ratio, a division, and you get the answer? 3. If I did 24 minus 8, I would get the 16. Yeah? So 24 minus 8 being a common difference, that would give you the 16. But that would mean we add 16 every time, and this would mean we multiply by 3 every time. And the correct one is whatever, in this case, it's not the arithmetic. So we could now apply 24 times 3. That's all we need, right? 652. Uh, This one is considered a kind of harder, but only because there's lots of stuff going on and you have to kind of solve the problem. So we have two arithmetic sequences that have the same first term. 
The fifth set, we've got lots of information. So I tell you what, let's just take it step by step. So it's a plus, oh, it's a plus sequence. Well, actually, there are two plus sequences. And we go up to the fifth term and the fourth term. But I'm going to go sequence number one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Just put a bit. And then I'm going to say sequence number two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, potentially, you don't need to do that, but let's keep them separately. What information can I now put? into my list there. How does that? The fifth term. So the fifth term of the first sequence and the fourth term of the second are both equal to 16. So let's put it. So the fifth term is 16 and the fourth term is 16. So let's write it down like that. Um, and actually, I need to go a bit further, don't we? So we've got eight and nine. The ninth term of the first sequence and the seventh term of both 28. So both equal to 28, the ninth and the seventh. So the ninth is 28 and the seventh is 28. Right. All that makes sense? So the only hard thing at the moment there is just taking that information out, yeah? What techniques have you got to make that easier? Well, I don't need to go any further. I mean, what technique have you got to make sure that information gets put on that map? I would say this is the kind of thing you'd like to see how I'm underlining things and writing it out. Don't be afraid to do that. Okay, now the question says find the first term and the common differences for the two sets. And now it's basically just two questions in one. But there's nothing difficult. The difficult bit was setting it out like that in the first place. That's your homework. Have you already done it? Okay, check your work then. That's your homework for next week. That question. Okay, cool.